In this video, we are going to add forests on our terrain. The easiest way to do that is to go to the Populations tab in the Scene Terrain options. And here you have the choice among several trees. And you can select any one of them. You have uh, a thumbnail for each tree. You have their height. It's a bit, the, the font is small, but um, you can increase the size like this. And maybe you can see a bit better. And you have their, their height, their full name, though it's difficult to read because it's pretty long. And you have a human silhouette right next to each tree to give you a, a reference of an idea about uh, their size. For now there are about uh, one, two, three, four, five species and for for each one you have three variation of the of the species. You have an adult version of the tree, you have a medium version and you have a young small version. So select any one of them let me reduce that. Just like for the Sin City library, here I suggest you choose another layer and you import the tree. Here you have two options, link or append. If you don't really know which one to choose, I suggest you choose link and the option to link the tree will keep your uh, file size small, smaller. And for more detail about this option, I suggest you read at the description here or you look in the, uh, the online manual when it's ready. Okay, so then when you have a tree selected, choose, uh, click on this button import the selected tree. You can import all of them, but I suggest to, to import only the ones you need. So I import this one. And let's import uh, the smaller ones, this one, and this one. Because these uh, trees are linked into our scene, we have to make them local before we can do anything else with them. So if I go to the object options and I click on this button to make the tree local, and I do this for the three of them. And if I go down here, there is a scene terrain panel and I enable this checkbox, place a population of this object on the terrain. So I do this for the three for all the trees I wish to to place uh, a population for on the terrain. Now if I go back to our terrain layer and to the scene terrain options and if I enable this, uh, this checkbox to list the objects to populate, I should see the, the three trees listed here. That means the next time I click on the Populate Terrain button, these objects will be taken into account and they will mm, populate the terrain. So I do it now. And there it is. The small dots here represent um, the trees. And the trees are not directly drawn into the viewport because that would, that would take uh, too much CPU power and it would be slow to draw. If I do a test render <coughs> uh, like this, I should see the trees now on the terrain. And here they are. So it's working. Mm, let me add a more a better sky than this one in the evening 
to have a more realistic lighting. And our default forest is should be visible now. Okay, so how do we control uh, the trees to better uh, have to better have uh, what we what we want? <clears throat> so the trees are using the the particles a particle system in Blender. So you select the terrain object and you go into the particle settings. Now for each each kind of tree <clears throat> for which there is a population, you can control uh, the most, I mean, I mean we're going to see the most important settings, but you can play with a, a lot of them. Uh, the most obvious one is the number of uh, trees you want. So right now for each of them you have a thousand trees, but we can increase them to, to anything we want. Let's say 10,000. Uh, and here you have the uh, vertex groups, sorry. You have the vertex groups and this controls the density of the density of the trees on the terrain. And by default, it's the trees vertex group which controls where the trees should go or not. For instance, notice that the trees are not uh, placed under the water or they are not placed on steep slopes by default. And this vertex group has been created automatically by, by Sin Terrain when the terrain was uh, generated. We can see it here. If we, if, we, if we select the terrain mesh, go to the mesh settings and here are the vertex groups present by default. Let's go into weight paint so we can visualize. Let me hide the water object so we can visualize the vertex groups. Vertex uh, paint. Right. So this is the trees vertex groups. Blue me blue is the lower I mean it's zero, it's the lower value possible, and red is the highest value possible, it's one. And the colors in between are all the values between zero and one. The heights the height is uh, from alti the lowest altitude to the highest point on the terrain. City is where the city uh, ground uh, is on the terrain, but since we don't have any city here, everything is considered not a city. Beaches, well, this is quite self-explanatory. This is where the sand goes. Slopes, all right. Red means very steep slopes and blue means flat, uh, flat land. And above water is useful for knowing where is below the water and where is above the water. Knowing all of that, we can now control where we want our trees on the terrain. So we we set, I mean by default the trees are placed on the terrain using the trees vertex groups uh, vertex group, and we can paint it. Okay, so let's start. Let's disable uh, the adult and medium. Mm versions of the trees and we'll deal with the young version of the tree. Right now there are uh, a thousand of them. Let's put 10,000 of them on the terrain. And if I go here, let's modify 
the default vertex group that controls their spatial density on the terrain. And I'm not, I'm not going to modify directly the tree's vertex groups, a uh, vertex group, because I might need it later. So I copy, I make a duplicate on it by selecting it and I do copy vertex group. And this one I rename trees young. Okay. And in real life, the trees are not randomly placed like that. They are more, they are forming uh, clumps and they are grouped where, uh, I don't know, for, for example, where the, the rain is flowing from the mountains or they are grouped on the terrain depending on factors such as underwater, I mean the, the water under the ground or other reasons. So we are going to simulate that by manually painting the vertices. So what I'm going to do is since they are already placed where they should be, I'm just going to erase parts where I don't want the trees. So if I go into weight paint mode and I choose uh, subtract. All right, and I'm going to subtract random parts like this. Perhaps strength is too, my, my tool is too strong. Let's, let's add a bit of variety like this. Right, I'm going to keep them near the mountains. Okay, now that's better. Let's do a test render from this point of view. Oh, sorry, I forgot to, no, uh, I don't remember, yes, that's it. Uh, I forgot to turn off the other trees. We're going to to check first the young version, if it's, if it's correct. And here I, I see that I forgot to specify for the young tree population to use the tree's young vertex group. And here it is, it's using our custom vertex group. That looks better. Okay, let's see with the medium version activated and if we set it for now on the same vertex group. And we set a thousand, um, let's put it on the half of it, 5,000, because they are, they are taller, they are bigger, there should be less of them. And this isn't looking too bad. All right. And now let's add the adult version. And for the adult version, I'm going to reduce again the density. So if I go here, I add a new vertex group. I don't copy the trees vertex group. This time I, I have copied the trees young vertex group and I rename it adult. You can, you can, do a, you can use any method you like. 
but this is a method I use to progressively refine from the young version to the to the bigger adult version since they should be at, at about the same position on the terrain but the adult version should be more uh, there should be few, fewer of them first and then secondly they should be more at the center of the the clumps of trees so if I erase uh, like that a bit like that like this and I'm trying to guess where they would tend to concentrate on the in a natural environment and usually they the bigger tree trees they have a they are more concentrated than the small trees and they are probably not on the on the mountains or at least not on the he uh, the highest points like this all right so i'm going I'm going a bit fast for this is just for the demonstration but you can take as much time as you want for for this kind of manual work work and don't forget here to enable this population we're going to turn it down to 2000 and they are going to use the trees adult vertex group let's make test render And that's not, yeah, that's looking quite good. It's much more realistic than before, where we had the trees randomly placed on the terrain that was boring and quite unrealistic. Now, the populations look more like real life forests. I'm going to let it finish its job. Okay, so I think the result is it's a good starting point for a realistic forest. Uh, remember that you can add, uh, well, in this picture we are using only the same species of tree, I mean this, the same species. You can, I mean those three, you can of course add more trees on your terrains uh, from the library and here we're only using those three you can play with them you can mix them any way you like you can also use your own you don't have to use trees you can use any kind of object even even a basic cube if you want to place a population of cubes on your terrain i don't know just uh, uh, remember to come here and uh, sorry here and you enable this checkbox Right, so you can you have a lot to play with using the populations, and when you know how to do it, you can have nice forests on your terrain pretty easily.